Hello everyone, and welcome to Thermodynamics. So, we're in chapter one, let's begin. Okay, so here you see a picture of a rock falling. Now, why do we care about this rock falling? Well, we care about it because thermodynamics is all about energy. It's the science of energy. Now, specifically, thermodynamics is about heat. That's the thermo and how heat helps us do work. And we're going to talk about that for the rest of the semester. But before we can get into that, we're going to have to develop some other definitions. So I will be honest with you. Chapter one has a bunch of definitions, but it's giving us terminology, things we can use to talk about thermodynamics as we go through the rest of the course. So please don't tune this out. There are some very important details here. Okay. So energy is the ability to cause changes. Thermodynamics is simply saying I have heat and it helps us produce power. That's what we care about. Now, if you're wondering like, well, where do I see thermodynamics? You have probably dealt with thermodynamics today. If you have a car, you dealt with thermodynamics because that car has an engine. It goes room. How does it go room? Well, it goes room because it burns gas. What does that burning gas give you? It gives you heat. What does that heat do? It produces power and your car moves. As a note, I've been taking art classes. So if you, um, if you like the drawings, you can buy them for $8 billion each. Send me an email. Okay. Now, why is this rock over here falling? Why do we care about it? Because it's our first principle that we're going to be using the rest of the semester. It's one of the most key principles you're going to have, which is simply conservation of energy. So it says that I can have energy go from one form to another, but the total amount of energy remains constant. Energy is not destroyed. Now, like if you're doing the whole like E equals MC squared thing, I don't actually know if Einstein talked like that, but that's how he's always shown. Um, yes, energy can go to mass, mass can go to energy, but that's outside the realm of this course. So we're not going to worry about that too much. Okay, if you're going nuclear, that's important. For here, not so much. Energy can't be destroyed. It just goes from one form to another. Now, as we'll learn later, that form's not always useful, but it's one form to another. This is what's called the first law of thermodynamics. And it's simply how we talk about this. Energy is a thermodynamic property and it's not going to go anywhere. Now let's look back at our example over here. So I have a rock, it's falling, and to begin with it has 10 units of potential energy. Potential energy is what you give something when you lift it up high. It's got the potential for movement. So the more movement it has possible, the more potential energy it has. Now as this falls, what you'll see is that it's going down, it has less potential to move down. Therefore, it's less potential energy. However, it has gained velocity, which is a different form of energy called kinetic energy, kinetic for movement. And if you look at this, seven plus three, who would have guessed? Those add up to 10. So the total amount of energy remains constant. Now, we are currently ignoring that there is air pushing on this and that would be slowing it down. And so technically, if you were to add a potential in kinetic, you would not get the same amount as the beginning. Some of the energy is lost to friction, lost to heat, other things that we don't care about and we're not measuring. But overall, the total amount of energy in the universe did not change. It stayed constant. Okay, let's get some more definitions here. And then we'll have a fun question. So the second law of thermodynamics is simply an obvious one. I'll be honest with you. A lot of these laws are pretty obvious if you think about it. Like, for example, I have some hot coffee here, right? and the hot coffee's hot. Now, if my room is cooler than the coffee, that hot coffee is going to give heat to the room and it's gonna get cooler until finally it's, you know, about 23 degrees Celsius, which is about room temperature. Okay, my question for you is this, which is more useful, a cold cup of coffee and a slightly, barely warmer room or a hot cup of coffee and a slightly colder room? The answer is the hot cup of coffee is way more helpful. It's way more helpful. It has higher quality of energy. So what the second law of thermodynamics really says is that my energy is always going in decreasing quality. So it's going in the direction of decreasing quality from more useful forms to less useful. Like for example, that rock we had earlier, when it's falling beforehand, it had full potential energy. And then it had some kinetic energy. It's transferring. But what we're not realizing is that some of that is being lost into other forms. 
It's starting to cause the air to swirl around. That's not useful to me. The rock itself is getting hotter because it's heating up through friction. That's not useful to me. And if it's not useful, that's lower quality. Or even if it's just less useful, okay, less useful. It's going to lower quality. Okay, and there's two ways we're going to talk about thermodynamics. There's classical and there's statistical. Okay, classical is looking at the macroscopic big picture. Statistical is looking at the microscopic picture. Because anything that you see, feel, experience is coming from microscopic forces. There is some atom somewhere that's bumping into you. That is why you feel air pressure. That is how you feel temperature. That guy bounces off of you. All of those things bouncing off of you are getting kinetic energy to your skin and your kinetic, your, that kinetic energy is being interpreted as temperature. All those air molecules bouncing around, constantly pressing on you, that's how you feel air pressure. So microscopic things are leading to macroscopic results. Now, I don't have a microscope with me currently. I don't carry one around. And so when I'm dealing with thermodynamics problems, I don't want to have to try to go and count molecules. I don't want to be like, okay, there's one molecule, there's two molecules, there's three molecules, there's four molecules. I don't want to count them. And so instead, we deal with it on a macroscopic approach, where we look at things like temperature, which comes from microscopic properties, and pressure, which comes from microscopic properties, and density. But these guys are a lot easier to calculate, a lot easier to measure, and a lot easier to work with. So we use those because they make solving engineering problems way easier. OK, now here's your question for ending this. I have no idea if this video is going to work properly. If it doesn't, oh, it did work. Pausing the video. OK, this guy right here, he's going downhill. My question for you is, can he speed up without pedaling? Can he speed up without pedaling? And what in the world is going on with this person right here? There's a person on a bicycle, like riding it. Like, oh, that's crazy. OK, now this is a video. Pause and answer. I'm not going to hear your answers. I'm sorry. And let's watch this real quick. It's only a minute long. So, I don't want the sound. Sorry. There we go. OK, he's getting past. Obviously, not the best biker at the moment but he has a plan. So you can see that they're all going downhill, but they're having to pedal to go downhill. They're having to pedal to maintain their velocity. We'll talk about why that is in a second. And so this guy, I think this has actually been outlawed now for like bike races. But notice he's not pedaling, the rest of them are, and he's going downhill. He is speeding up. He's passing them all. And just so you know, he does manage to get out of that position safely. Okay. So how in the world did that work? Well, all of them have kinetic energy. They have potential energy that is transforming into kinetic energy. But that kinetic energy is being dissipated by friction. My pen is slowing down because I brought a video in here. That's okay. Um, and that friction was dissipating energy. That means energy is going from high quality kinetic energy to lower quality heat and air movement. What he did was by getting on his bike in a Superman position, he reduced the friction. He reduced the air pressure on his body. And so in doing that, less of his energy was going to a lower quality um, type of energy. More of it was staying as kinetic energy and he was able to just fly down the hill. Okay. That's it for this time. Thank you all so very much. And I'll see you all next time as we continue through thermodynamics. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.